gonna be. <laughs> No poke, please. Arr, arr. <sighs> okay, it will be like. <sighs> okay, there's a lot of distractions in here, aren't there? Hi, crafty people! Today I'm joined by Isabel, and she's showing us the dress that I made for her using the pattern that I cloned a few weeks back. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I add pockets to a dress like this, and how I sew a stretchy neckband because they can be a bit tricky. To make this dress for Isabel, I used the pattern that I cloned a few weeks back. If you missed that video, I'll leave the link in the description box so that you can see how I made this pattern for the dress using a dress she already wears. If this is your first time here, then welcome. This channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. All of the kids' clothes related videos are all in a playlist. You can check the description box if you want to watch some of those videos next. I hope you enjoyed this video today and let's get making! <laughs> Good one. My mom likes my dress. To make this dress, you're going to need a stretchy fabric. I find the stretchiest direction and I place that on the width of my pattern pieces. Here I'm pinning down the skirt piece ready to cut one out. I'm adding some extra length to the hem. This way I'll be able to let it down as Isabel gets taller. That was one of the tips that I gave last week in my video about tips for making kids clothes. If you haven't watched that yet, it'll be linked in the description box. You can watch that afterwards. I'm using the first skirt piece to cut out the second one so that I know they'll be exactly the same. Then I'm cutting out my bodice on the fold so that I have two pieces, one for the front and one for the back. Keep in mind the direction of the stretch of your fabric when you're placing your pattern pieces down. I'm cutting my sleeve on the fold and I'm making sure the stretch is going across the width of the arm. I'm adding a bit of extra in the length here so that I know the sleeves will be a good length. As with the skirt piece, I'm using this first sleeve that I've cut out as the template to then cut the second sleeve, knowing that then the length of it and the seam allowance I've made will be exactly the same on the second piece. At this point, I realized that I forgot to cut the front piece's neckline smaller than the back piece, so I'm doing that adjustment now. I then decided to make some pockets. So I'm cutting out this template of a pocket shape on the back of some of my kids' artwork and then cutting out four of those pattern pieces on my fabric. You need four pieces so that you have a front and back for each of your two pockets. Once I've cut out all of my pattern pieces, I like to lay them out where they're meant to go on the pattern to have a sense that I've cut out everything I need and that they're all fitting well together. I have all my pattern pieces cut out for the dress we're making for Isabel and now I'm having a look at how we're going to actually construct the dress. So I have here the dress that I made this pattern from. So I'm going to have a look at all the seams, that's where the pattern pieces have been sewn together and I'm going to look at the seams to give me a clue about the instructions for how to make this pattern. When I look here at the seam that is connecting here the side seam, the side of the dress and this bit here the sleeve, I can see that this side seam down the side of the body has been sewn on last, it's on top of this seam here that is attaching the arms to the armhole here. But then when I come to this seam here, this is the seam where the bodice of the dress meets the skirt, I can see that this has been attached afterwards. So you can see here that this seam is on top. So that means that they've attached the skirt after they have sewn through this side seam on the shirt. So using the seams as a guide, I can see what order they've sewn each of these pieces in. They've sewed the two skirt pieces together first, they've attached the sleeve to the bodice, and then they've sewed down the bodice side and down the sleeve at the same time and then they've attached a completed top and sleeve to the skirt piece. I can tell that the hemming has been done last because the hem is on top of this side seam here and the hemming is always the last step on each project. So now that we've got a sense of the order that we're going to construct this dress, we're going to start by sewing 
the skirt pieces together on the sides and then working our way to the sleeves and the bodice. I have a stretch needle in my machine because I'm using a stretchy fabric and I also have my machine set on a stretch stitch which could be a zigzag stitch on your machine or a lightning stitch. A stretch stitch allows your fabric and your thread to both stretch together so that your thread doesn't snap when your fabric stretches. I've pinned my pocket pieces into the seam line of the skirt so that once I sew it all together, the pockets will be hidden within the side of the skirt pieces. With each of the four pocket bag pieces now attached to the seams of the skirt, I'm going to sew around the pocket bag and down the side seam to attach the front of the skirt to the back of the skirt. Again, I'm using a stretch stitch and we'll be using a stretch stitch for each of the parts that we make on this dress. Also, just to let you know, for the sake of the video not being too long, I'm just showing you the process of how I sew one side of everything, but you will obviously need to make two sleeves and two sides of the skirt, so I'm, I'm sure you can work that out. I'm flipping the pocket bags to the front of the skirt and pinning them to the front piece of the skirt as well so that then I can sew them down and that way when Isabel's using them they won't be at the back of her skirt but they'll be right at the front they're easy to access. Place your two bodice pieces right sides together and we're going to sew along the shoulder seams. To attach the sleeves, I'm marking the middle of the sleeve at the top there and then matching that to the seam we've just created on the shoulder. I'm pinning that piece in place and then pinning along the sleeve so that it is even around the armhole. Having sewn around the sleeves, I'm now laying it out so that I can have another look at it and then I'm going to be trying it on Isabel to see how it's fitting. As you sew each part of your item of clothing, you want to try it on and see how it's fitting. So at the moment I'm trying on this shirt even though the sleeves are open and the side of the shirt is open, hands down. The bodice fits nicely under her arm here. Sleeves are quite long, I did cut them extra long but they might be even extra extra long but that's okay. I think that looks good. Is it a nice length? It's got pockets in here. Can you fit, does your hand fit in the pocket? You try. Oh yes. I'll sew from her wrist down here to her tummy on both sides and then attach the skirt piece around her waist and try it on her again so that I can see how much of a hem to take up on the bottom and on the sleeves. So I'm not going to cut off any on the sleeves. I'm just going to make a hem so that as she grows, I can let that hem out and she can wear it uh, for another season, hopefully. I flip the bodice inside out so the right sides are together. I'm starting to pin underneath the armhole so that the front and back seams are lined up with each other. Then I'm pinning the rest of the sleeve and bodice piece ready to sew down that side. Attach the skirt piece to the bodice. I'm flipping the skirt over the top of the bodice piece and then I'm pinning them together so I can sew around that seam. I'm starting by pinning the seams together again. So the seam on the side of the skirt to the side seam on the bodice piece. Then I'm adding extra pins around it and then sewing them together. Just a friendly reminder that if you are enjoying this video, I'd love you to press the like button and to subscribe.
Now we're ready to attach the neckband to this dress. I start by measuring the distance around the neck hole and taking that measurement, I multiply it by 0.85 and that tells me the length of the piece of fabric I need for my neckband. I'm cutting this neckband on the bias, which means diagonally across the grain of my fabric as it helps it to stretch better. So I'm cutting off a piece and then measuring it that length that I found by multiplying the distance by 0.85. I want my neckband to be two centimeters wide, but I need to cut it twice that width in order to have a front and back, and then a little bit longer than that again for the seam allowance. Sew the short sides of your neckband together to create a loop. Fold your neckband in half lengthwise and then we're going to be quartering this neckband. That means placing a pin to mark each quarter of the neckband. Then we're going to be quartering the dress as well so that we can match those points together so that the neckband will fit evenly around the neck hole of the dress. Before sewing the neckband on, I'm going to add a piece of ribbon into the seam line so that I can use this as a little fake tag. This was another tip that I gave last week in my video about top 10 tips for sewing kids clothes. This is a great little hack to help kids know how to put their clothing on the right way, so I try and do it with all the clothing pieces I make. If you're looking for any other great tips like that, there's a video linked down below that you can watch after this. You'll need to stretch the neckband as you're sewing it to the neck hole because it is smaller than the hole that it's going into. Remembering not to stretch the fabric underneath, you are just stretching that top layer of the neckband. At this point, I tried the dress on Isabel to see how much of a hem to take up, but I didn't film that. I'll just show you the process of how I hem the sleeves and hem the bottom of the skirt. I've marked how wide I want the hem to be on these sleeves, and I put pins in place to hold it together. I'm folding it up twice to create a rolled hem so that the edge of the fabric is hidden into the seam. I'm doing the same for the hem on the skirt piece. I'm marking how high up I want the hem to be. And then I am folding the skirt up twice and pinning it in place. I found it easier to fold it up one time and pin it in place and then to go back and refold and repin over the top just because this was quite a slippery fabric to be working with. Then you're ready to sew around the hems. Sewing around these sleeves is going to be tricky because they're so little and tiny. So it's going to be a little bit fiddly. You'll need to manipulate the sleeve around a bit so that you don't sew through the sleeve to the other side. It is very fiddly, needing to shift the sleeve around, sew a few centimeters and shift the sleeve around again. Just remember to take it nice and slow. The dress is all complete, so now we're ready to try on Isabel and see how it looks. Boo. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching as I made this dress for Isabel. If you enjoyed watching this video, I'd love for you to press the like button down below. It tells YouTube that this is a video that you found valuable. Also, if you press the subscribe button, next to it is a little bell icon. If you click that, you'll get a notification when my next video goes up. Next week, my video is what I make for baby shower gifts and for new babies. It's the perfect DIY baby gift. So I really hope you come back next week to see what we're making. Thank you so much for watching and for joining us in today's video. I hope you watch another of my videos after this. And thank you, Isabel, for being in my video too. Yes. Yes. So until next time, go get creative and we'll see you later. See you later.